sell everything and move into an RV. It'll be fun, they said. Travels Abound did just that. They sold their house to live the free, cheap, and easy life. They listened to the Bob and went to live their childlike wonder. So we sold our home of 17 years, moved into this 2022 Grand Design Solitude. We now have major problems, and customer service has dropped the ball. Let us explain. Yeah, customer service has dropped the ball. What are we going to do about it? The couple has some frame issues that caused some major, major problems. Things were twisted, and they had screws popping up from the floor. Their home was falling apart. Grand Design is one of those companies with superior customer service. They spent 21 days of unanswered calls and emails. Uh, and so we called Grand Design. No return phone call. Left voicemails for days. Sent emails to their customer service email contact. No response. So this dragged on. And uh, finally got in touch with somebody. They said, we don't normally allow families up here. Uh, that's just not what we do. Take it back to your dealer. <laughs> so We yeah. can't take it to a dealer. Pass the buck. Without a home for months. Yeah, we need a scheduled time. And explaining that can be difficult sometimes. Yeah, and the, the so I did what they asked. You know, I called different dealers around the area. And uh, all the others, all the dealers that I reached out to just kind of chuckled. And <laughs> we're, we're six months behind. <laughs> It's not going to work for us. Six months uh, so behind. So I called Grand Design again because we started noticing so many of uh, the Facebook pages that follow Grand Design. Mm -hmm. People, families were saying, yeah, we just dropped our, our rig off at Elkhart at the Grand Design Service Center. Up there. <laughs> They're taking care of us, going to get us back on the road in a week or two. <coughs> Fantastic customer service, right? Wonderful. <laughs> so <laughs> he said, <laughs> called uh, Grand Design Customer <laughs> Service again. A couple more unanswered phone calls and voicemails. A couple more non-returned emails. And 21 days, this drug out. 21 days. 21 days. Isn't that crazy? Now, surely this is an isolated incident, right? Well, I found another one. Uh, how about Discovery Bound RV? This family had some floor issues as well. As you remember, last time we took in the rig, we had our floors fixed and they uh, basically cut out the squares of the tiles and glued it back on after they removed the, the screws. Well, after about a, two months or three months, we noticed that the tiles are coming up. So another important tip when you do bring it in, especially for your last warranty, um, get, let them give you a guarantee that in case something goes wrong with their repairs, that you have some kind of a leeway to come back and then fix it again. Because yeah, fix it again. You heard that, the, the, the phrasing of that. <laughs> fix it again. <laughs> now, these people have been waiting two years. Uh, yes, that's right. I didn't say months, but years. And they still have not had their issue resolved. You guys. Yes. So the good news is we get to pick up our rig even early, not late, early. We get to do it a day early. We dropped off our rig, they had it two days, and they're done in record time. Yes. <laughs> Except they didn't fix the floor. <laughs> Again. Again. And why is that? Because they, ha they said, oh, we have plenty of flooring, no problem, we'll fix it. And then they realize that it's the wrong flooring. Yeah. So basically, Check this out. Jayco doesn't make the 2020 Jayco North Point 377 RLBH pattern for the flooring anymore. Yeah. So apparently our 2020 rig has now become like the 10 year rule. <laughs> That's it's like right. way past. <laughs> That's right. That thing is two years old. It's obsolete now. We don't make that old shit. That's so 2020. Isn't that some funny shit? I mean, it's not funny, but don't you find it hilarious that, oh, well, hey, that was a 2020. This is 2022. We already made that obsolete. It's discontinued. Oh, man. So do you still want to buy an RV? You still want to sell everything? Hey, and let us not forget, Dreaming Out Loud RVing. 
And their new rig with the big giant stress crack that they had to up, turn their lives upside down to take their shit back to the manufacturer. Oh, yeah. Sounded pretty stress-free to me, right? Now, there are more stories like these. Uh, YouTube is filled with videos of the wonders of nomadic life. The thrill of leaving it all behind and hitting the road for the stress-free life. Well, none of this sounds all that stress-free to me. But, hey, that's just me. Now, RVs, or recreational vehicles, that's right, it's right there in the name, were never built like bomb shelters to begin with, right? You know, they were made to go on vacations, right? You know, the weekend warriors or, you know, a week or two, yeah, that's what they were made for. But the popularity of the full-time life brought on some changes in the RV industry. The glamorization of selling everything, buying an RV, and hitting the road made this lifestyle take off like a rocket. You know, and with the, the help of social media, more and more people fell for the beautiful views and the exciting, adventurous life. The RV industry, they responded with the all-weather <laughs> RV. Yeah, right. If you believe that, yeah. <laughs> Pre-wired solar panels, uh, you know, hookups, they became pretty common. Storage and boondocking capabilities became a big focus. You know, there was different layouts. They had, uh, you know, instead of the big class A's, they had the little small class A's, toy haulers, fancy class B's, and, you know, all that. So they did make some changes to accommodate this full-time extravaganza, this blow-up. We heard reports of the millions of RV, RVs being ordered, you know, um, then the pandemic hit. People were tired of lockdowns and travel restrictions, so no one wanted to fly, even if they could, and uh, they didn't want to stay in hotels. So the RV was the answer. You could still travel and be in your little self-contained unit, and you didn't have to touch anybody. <laughs> you could stay in your little <laughs> COVID-free bubble. And record-breaking RV sales were reported even during the pandemic, with projections of seeing no decline in future orders. This meant the manufacturers were swamped. This had people waiting for years or more for their ordered RV to be delivered. So with dollar signs in their eyes, they rushed to pump out new rigs. There's a supply chain issue at the time, too, so this meant that, you know, normal parts... They were being replaced with whatever they could dig up, whatever they had on hand. So, yeah, even the things inside, like refrigerators and pumps and stoves and microwaves, all kinds of little things. Yeah, it wasn't the usual stuff. It was whatever they could get their hands on. So, now you have a vehicle that is not really meant to be lived in 24-7. A vehicle that is built lightweight and what some would call uh, affordable. Well, you know, like uh, the way Obamacare was affordable. Now they're being slapped together and shoved out the door. In an attempt to meet the still growing demand, you know, corners are cut. So stories like these, yeah, that's the result. What was once the cream of the crop, the brand to buy, the one with the awesome customer service is now churning out garbage and just total shit. I know I can hear it now. That's why I buy used. Well, then you are buying someone else's headache that they dumped. At least when you got a new piece of shit, you can scream at the warranty people and the manufacturer. When it's used, you just have to get your wild out and cry a lot. The thing is, before you fall for the social media hype, before you sell everything to live the stress-free, easy life, stop and think. Most of the nomads that I have watched for years have bought or are buying land or a house. Mm, there's a reason for that. It gets old after a while. You want that place of your own. You don't want to check in and follow rules. You don't want to deal with all the people that have the same access that you do to the free BLM land. Because, let's face it, all of them aren't considerate and one of the tribe. And let's not forget what happens when your house, your home, is in the shop. That is, if you can survive the waiting list to even get into the shop. Then we have cases like these where you can't even get a returned phone call or email. If you do get some reassuring words, you go two years without a resolution. Now you left a housing market that you may not be able to get back into. 
you sold an asset that appreciates for a tin can that loses value daily with every mile you put on it. Now, sure, it is made to look uh, like just one big adventure. Yes, they say it's cheap and you can save all sorts of money. But just remember this. Just like everything else, if it sounds too good to be true, it usually is. But hey, you don't have to agree with me. That's never the point here. The point is, yep. I'm blind views. And that's the way I see it. What we do here is go back, 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 back.